there, how you doing? Dave Fenoy here. Another Wednesday, first Wednesday in the new year 2023. And here we are again, starting the year off with another Ask Dave Fenoy Anything, because it is 6 p.m. Pacific here on Facebook Live. I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday uh, vacation. Uh, I had a few days off, but, uh, you know, somehow they managed to keep you busy. Uh, didn't travel anywhere, uh, stayed home. Uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of that time was by myself, uh, which was okay. You know, sometimes as a guy, we just really like to uh, be around the house and chill without being bothered by our loved ones. <laughs> uh, you know, when it's just me, I get a chance to uh, say hello. So if you'd like to say hello, uh, just pop in the comments section. And I I'm going to ask uh, for some help today. Uh, I got a, a couple of texts from somebody I met at uh, uh, that's voiceover uh, who sent me a text and asked me some questions, and I thought maybe you could help me answer them. But first of all, Nevin Stoltz, there you are. Hello, how are you? Good to see you, man. Uh, new student, been working with you, and uh, you're doing just fine. Okay, who else we got here? Janice Johnson Hunter. Happy New Year, Janice. How are you? Um, oh, let's see. Nevin has a comment. The older I get, the more I want a relaxing holiday every now and then. Well, you know, there's another thing about uh, uh, getting uh, older as a man uh, and ending up, you know, head of a family, uh, one of the elders in your tribe. Um, Santa Claus ain't coming to you. You're Santa Claus. <laughs> I, I have to take on uh, my responsibility. Also, the things I would want Santa to bring me for Christmas, I just cannot ask anybody else <laughs> to buy for me. All right. Uh, Jeremy Adams. Hey, uh, Jeremy, how you doing? Like the microphone there. Uh, Heather Lynn Watt. Hello to you, Heather. I hope your world is wonderful. And Ingrid Nelson, girls like alone time too. Happy New Year, Dave. It's true. I think we guys like it more than you girls, though. I know that might be a really sexist statement to say, but I don't know. If uh, if it is, didn't mean it to be, and I hope you won't cancel me. Uh, Grace Newton, a regular hello from Raleigh, North Carolina. Grace, good to see you. I hope your holiday season was wonderful. And uh, Santa Claus or Santa Dad, or Santa Husband, or Santa Boyfriend, uh, or Santa Your Girlfriends uh, uh, gave you things you really like. Uh, also something I noticed, uh, the older you get, and uh, you've been living in a house for a while, and uh, you've collected enough stuff, there's some gifts, as nice as they are, I'm like, well, where do I put this? Uh, so I'm finding that things like uh, gift baskets with food, uh, uh, subscriptions to, uh, say, a coffee or tea service, um, Omaha steaks or some other food product, uh, gifts that you can uh, enjoy and then they don't take up any room in the closet or on the wall or in a corner someplace. Just just love that. And, of course, another great idea is, uh, you know, give yourself the gift of voiceover lessons or give somebody else a gift of voiceover lessons. I probably should have talked about that before the holiday, right? That way you could have, yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, oh, Grace Newton. Santa fiance as of last month. Congratulations. Yay. As a matter of fact, let's, uh, let's, let's get that. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Congratulations, Grace Newton. Uh, and when's the wedding and all that good stuff. And um, oh, Jeremy Adams, I'm spending half my time downsizing these days. You know, I know the feeling. I'm about to do some remodeling on my house, uh, and it's going to be pretty extensive. And uh, for a little while, I'm going to be I'm going to have to be out of here. Uh, not just yet, um, but uh, you know, I'm loathing packing up all that stuff. So while I'm doing it, I'm going to make sure the stuff that ain't coming back in the house once it's redone uh, has gone to Goodwill or the trash or a homeless shelter or someplace else where it can do somebody some good. Um, all right. Well, let's get down to business. I uh, mentioned I, 
Yeah, one of the things I like about uh, going to conventions um, as a speaker, as a teacher, uh, is getting to meet people and sometimes get a new student that you can help out and hopefully along the way uh, see them progress and start having a successful career. Got somebody, uh, Eric, I don't know if I should mention his last name, I won't, Uh, but Eric, uh, not a new student yet, but uh, I was passing out my card, and when I say passing out my card, I've got one of those cards now that you just tap a phone or they can uh, 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 look at the QR, have their phone uh, scan the QR code and whoop, all my information goes into their phone. Uh, so uh, Eric uh, wrote to say, uh, hey, what's up, Dave? Sorry to interrupt. This is Eric, last name omitted, from a few weeks ago at Sobus Career Expo, uh, starting off by seeing if this is your phone number. <laughs> Yes, on my card, my information is my real information, Uh, which sometimes, uh, most of the time, everybody's cool with that. Every now and then you get somebody that uh, is a little off kilter and you wish you hadn't given it to them, but uh, so far so good. So he says, Happy New New Year to you. So since you're a voiceover coach, what is your advice on how I can get myself out there or do what I or do you want to hear some impressions and stuff I have first? Um, I'm gonna let you guys answer that question once again. So Eric says, so since you're a voiceover coach, what is your advice on how I can get myself out there? Or do you want to hear some voice impressions and stuff I have first? Okay. Uh, and I mentioned uh, to him, I wrote back, uh, well, I'll be doing my Ask Dave Fennoy Anything broadcast at 6 p.m. Pacific this evening on Facebook Live. And he says, today? I said, yes, today. And most Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific. And he says, I'll see what I can do about one of those. How long does it take? <laughs> An hour. I'm going to answer your question on this broadcast. And then he says, I actually can't do tonight. I'm in the middle of something, but I'll try one of the next ones. Is that okay? Uh, but I can I can manage this. Do you want me to eventually send you some voice impressions, my demo reel, and maybe uh, doing regular voice work stuff? Well, okay, that's enough. Um, please, your help. What would you tell Eric about uh, what he has asked? Uh, and uh, would you approach a voiceover coach by saying, here, let me send you some stuff, and you tell me what you think? Uh, Jeremy Adams, hey, Dave, can you tell me the best difference between a video game demo and an animation demo? Okay, not answering Eric's question, but that's okay. Well, you kind of answer your question, Jeremy, in your question. Uh, One is a video game demo, and the other is an animation demo, and the differences are... Video games and video game demos tend to live in a more cinematic style. Um, The acting is more like stage or on camera. Animation demos are more animated. Uh, They're going to lean into the funny more. Uh, Doesn't mean there's not drama in some animation. Doesn't mean there's not comedy in some video games. But that is basically the difference. Um, And the two worlds... Although uh, I think video games kind of in many ways came out of animation, the performances uh, originally, um, they are very, very different genres now. So uh, the people who want to listen to a video game demo don't want animation on it. The people who want an animation demo don't want a video game on it. So uh, the days of a hybrid uh, video Uh, game animation demo are gone Uh, I think you'll hurt yourself uh, trying to do one of those all right Uh, 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 let's see Uh, skip down here Um, and Jim Frank coaching 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 that's for you, Eric. I know you're not listening, but I did tell you you can check it out on my YouTube channel, Dave and Oi Voiceover Training. Um, and thank you, thank you, Jim Frank, and Happy New Year. 
Heather Lynn Wyatt, I wouldn't approach it that way. I would ask first about what they have done so far to prepare for their VO career. A bit of the Socratic method there, maybe. Oh, that, and that is, is good advice for me. Uh, and I actually like that, Heather Lynn. Um, I, I will do that. What have you done? Uh, well, he has something he wants me to hear. Uh, so at some point I will hear that, I'm sure. Nevin Stoltz, I would recommend a consultation to find out where he is uh, in his journey and what he needs. Sounds like he has some demos, maybe. To get the opinion of a pro should be free, and to give your advice is an investment of money well spent. Um, and ordinarily, I actually do that for free, and I probably will do that for free. But once again, I'm trying to get your thoughts on how you think it should go. What you sh what you would do? Uh, oh, and here we go. Jim Franck in the background. Hi, Grace. And uh, so, Grace, I'm, I'm sure you're going to respond at some point. Uh, Max Goldberg. I would have told Eric it is a marathon and not a sprint. So true, so true, so true. Uh, as I was leaving radio, I spent a couple of years uh, after I got to Los Angeles. I was already doing voiceover uh, pretty much full-time at that point. But uh, I spent a couple years on a jazz radio station. I was the morning guy on the jazz radio station, Jazz FM. Uh, here in Los Angeles, it no longer exists, unfortunately. Um, but the uh, young lady who followed me on the air wanted to do voiceover work. And every... I'd known her for a long time, and every... Uh, uh, just before Christmas, well, actually, about, about, like, like about August, uh, she'd say, hey, help me put my uh, VO demo together so I can get some of that Christmas work. And every year I would tell her the same thing. Look, it's it's not about, oh, if I turn this demo in in August uh, and I'll get an agent and suddenly be ready uh, for retail Christmas work uh, that retail Christmas work is already being worked on. Uh, this isn't something you jump into uh, seasonally. If you're going to do voiceover, you have to take it very seriously, especially if you're not, say, uh, a famous comedian, uh, television actor, movie star. Uh, then it can become part of what you're doing. But for most of us who are uh, I'll call us journeyman professional voice actors, uh, the men and women who are the bones of this industry. For most of us, uh, it's a lot of hard work. It, there is the training. There is the investment in the equipment. Uh, there is uh, the investment in demos. There's the investment in time, uh, getting your agent. Uh, getting your your contacts and your clients uh, and doing uh, the work that you have to do to keep up with people. People are your best resource uh, so that you can continue working. I know there was a, a time in, in my life, about 2008, uh, when the economy crashed uh, and my two biggest clients went out of business. And at the time, I'd been doing very, very well, but, uh, and if I was under contract and the contract ended, somebody else hired me. And at this point, nobody did. And uh, it was kind of tough. And for a while, I was blaming the economy, and the economy would take some blame. But what I learned that I had to do was the same things I did to get my career started. Get some more training, uh, maybe clean up some bad habits that I might have. Uh, work with somebody whose ears I trust to, to help kind of guide me and get me out of whatever ruts I might have been in. And start promoting myself to the industry again. Uh, I did that all the time uh, when I started my career, and suddenly here I was, uh, hey, you're just supposed to come to me. Eh, it doesn't work like that. And uh, if you're not... Uh, advertising yourself, uh, there's a very good chance that uh, somebody else who is, is going to get a gig that might have been yours. So, all right, got to, oh, this is a long one here, but uh, we'll get to that in just a minute. 
Linda Baker, sounds like Era wants to sprint a marathon indeed. And uh, Heather Martin, hey Dave, I was just tuning in, but I'm wanting to do some training with you this year and wondering if you prefer contact via your website or other. You know, however you contact me is, is just fine. Oh, Heath, Heath, what did I say, Heather? Uh, Heath, uh, I believe you have my number. Uh, you can text me. You can go through my website uh, if you just want to go ahead and, and purchase uh, some lessons. By the way, uh, if you want to go to DaveFanoy.com and sign yourself up right now, the sale is going on through uh, January 10th, I believe, uh, for 5, 10, or 20 uh, lessons. Uh, but you can also hit me up um, on email or send me a message on Facebook. Uh, I will, you know, I'll get it. Uh, da, 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 da. Yinny Ann. Hi, Dave. Happy New Year. Just wanted to stop by and say thank you. Uh, back in 2017, you did a free video game workshop and told me, I know I'll hear you in the future. It's 2023. I'm a full-time voice actress working in several studios in South Florida and have worked with dubbing and indie game titles in Texas and L.A., your kind words and advice, plus all these AMAs and workshops, make such a difference in people's lives. Much love always. Hope to work with you someday. Oh, you know what? Uh, I love when I get notes like this. This, this Yinny, that makes my day. And I'm so glad that you are finding success. Um, and, you know, just keep it up. Uh, yeah, this is the thing that uh, when you're teaching, that's what you want to hear. All right. Jimmy Frank, I think we would all want to sprint, <laughs> but that's a one in a million shot. I, I heard a story about a guy uh, when I was, uh, I was down here, it was early in the 90s, uh, and I don't remember the gentleman's name, but he was a studio singer, and somebody had not shown up for a gig, uh, but the producers who were there heard his voice, heard him talking and said, Hey, um, our voiceover guy didn't show up. Would you mind stepping into the studio and, uh, just let's just see what you can do. Uh, well, he did very well. He got the gig and, uh, that gig turned into a great career. That's the only story I've heard of, uh, where, uh, kind of the Hollywood, uh, you, you, you saw the actress sitting on a, uh, stool in a restaurant and she was so pretty. He said, man, Let's see what she can do. Well, he had a nice voice. Let's see what you can do. Well, it worked for him. Uh, but those stories are rare, 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 rare. They are the exception to the rule. Walter Williams, journeyman is a great term for those of us who've been doing this for years. There's no quick track to voiceover success. Persistence, training, talent, and good timing all help. And, you know, one of the reasons, Walter, I, uh, I prefer the term uh, journeyman uh, those are the people who they're doing a lot of different things. They have a, an expertise in their field. Uh, um, you know, craftsmen, journeymen, but you, you, you want to stay a little bit humble. You also want to know there's always something else to learn. Um, and, uh, as I tell students all the time, whatever gig you get somebody had before you and somebody will have after you uh don't ever convince yourself that uh a gig you've got is yours forever it's yours for however long um your clients are interested in you enamored with you uh that you're filling the bill hitting the audience uh that they want you to hit uh but sooner or later uh, just like in radio, a new program director is going to come in, a new head of whatever is going to come in, and uh, they're going to want to wave their wand over it. Uh, Susan Bernard, what's going on, my friend? Hi, Dave. Happy New Year. Shiny 2023. Sending you and Mo my very best and wishing you both happy and healthy. We need to finish our chat on uh, you doing the demo process. Absolutely. Would you please tell us all again about your process producing, for producing a gaming demo, and the uh, cost. Thanks. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, 
Well, like everybody else, actually, uh, like most people, my cost is 2500 But if you've been working with me for five, ten, or more sessions, I knock $500 off of that because I figured you've already spent the money. Uh, and my process uh, typically is I, I want to work with people I've worked with. Uh, now, if somebody is, you know, shows up, they're really good, they're just they're really ready, and they just want me to help them, yeah, $2,500, we've got you going. Uh, but most of the people that I do demos for, I've been working with for a while. And the, the plus for that is I've gotten to know you. I've gotten to know what you sound like, uh, what kind of characters uh, you do well, uh, what your wheelhouse is. Uh, so it makes it easier to craft scripts for you uh, that fit you, uh, that allow you to tell your story. And my idea about demos is you want a variety of characters that fit some general uh, video game type characters, and then some characters that are just cinematic, uh, because video games to now are really just 70-hour movies. They're, they're movies where you get to decide what happens to different characters. You know, they thought that one day uh, movies or television shows would be the interactive entertainment, but it is video games. So uh, I want a variety of those. I will write, we will collaborate uh, and, and put together, uh, oh, say 14 scripts, uh, and we'll pare that down maybe to 10 or 12 uh, we'll record them. Um, and I like to have more than we need. Uh, eight to 10 is probably plenty. Uh, but I like to have more than we need because sometimes you've written a script, you think it's right in the person's wheelhouse. Uh, the read was wonderful, but for some reason, uh, production just falls flat or, something doesn't work right. Uh, something that you thought was going to be great isn't. So I like to have backup. And I've had the exact same thing happen when I thought, oh, you know, I'm not really feeling this. I don't think this is going to work. Uh, we'll finish it anyway. And whoa, <laughs> that spot's great. Uh, also, what I like to do is have each of those scripts produced completely as separate entities. I like each one to tell a little story. Uh, then from that, I will produce your demo. I'll make the cuts in that to produce your demo that'll come in about 90 seconds. Uh, and the reason I like both, because what you'll get from me is, one, the compilation demo, but you'll get all the extra little pieces, those, those little scenes that we've created. Because sometimes you just want to show off, oh yeah, this is me as a soldier. This is me as a business person. Uh, this is me as a witch. Uh, this is me as as a, a mom by day and a superhero by night. Wh whatever it is uh, that somebody's looking for, that you can just send them that short piece, or they can find that short piece on your website and uh, don't have to put in the long endurance of a minute and 30 seconds to find something. Our attention spans have become very, very very short. Um, all right. Sarah Catherine Conroy. Hey, how you doing? Send in love, Dave. And love is much appreciated always. Uh, Jeffrey Arthur Rudd. Same with me, Dave, a radio man, also sports broadcasting. Going into voiceover seems to be a link to these types of experiences, a natural progression. How different was it for you when you first got into it? Was it easy for you? Uh, and did you have to change anything? Uh, in terms of delivery. Let's see, do we get a, yeah, change anything in terms of delivery. Uh, you know, um, I started training in the 80s. I was on the radio as the morning jock on uh, KSOL and KDIA uh, for a number of years back and forth. Uh, and I started doing voiceover work there. Um, and the kinds of things that I got mostly were promo things. I was doing promos for TV 20. Uh, all the promos I could do in an hour for 25 bucks. Um, I was doing uh, commercials and the 
concert spots for uh, Marine World Africa USA. Um, my very first gig was for the California Lottery. Uh, so mostly I was doing TV promos and commercials. Uh, and because I was at the radio station, I was do- doing a lot of uh, retail. Now, what I had to learn to do was let go of the retail, let go of the selling, let go of the being the guy that's just a little too happy about the things that I'm talking about. Uh, now, uh, as I tell other people I'm training uh, in voiceover who are coming from radio, you know, we've, we've built up that muscle. And our ear says, this is what sounds right. So it's kind of a retraining of your brain and your ear to understand that uh, just like different styles of music, uh, if if you're a rock guy, it's probably not going to sound right in most of the jazz you're playing. Uh, if you're a jazz guy, it's not going to sound right in, in the country western music. Uh, you can have some blend. You can bring some flavor. Uh, but if you're going to play a style, play the style. So one of the things you're going to have to learn to do is let go of your ability to make words pretty and big and uh, learn to just say it. Learn to let it happen from here and here instead of trying to make it all happen right here. Because if you're this guy, you're not going to do a lot of work in voiceover. Um, I remember talking to somebody and uh, they, yeah, Dave, how are you, man? I'd, I'd like to do some voiceover. I understand you're doing a lot of it. Can you help me? Can you help me work it out? And I go, well, you know, right where you are right now, you know, it's so, so big and over said, uh, you got to pull back and make it subtle. Oh, no problem. I can pull back and make it subtle. And it's like, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> sometimes there are people who have just been doing it too long or are unwilling. Uh, ah, but I think, uh, you know, uh, Jeffrey, you, you probably can because you're, you're already asking the right questions. Uh, all right. Uh, Jeremy Adams, God, humility is so important. If I'd had half that much when pursuing theater in Seattle, I'd have done much better. Yeah. You know, I, I used to have a joke, uh, I remember uh, the late, great Ernie Anderson, who was the voice of ABC in the 70s and 80s. Uh, He was the first million-dollar voiceover guy, and I had the same agent, and I'd grown up watching him, listening to him in Cleveland, Ohio. He was the voice of Channel 5 and did this character, Goulard, they turn blue, purple caniff. Oh, red socks, you must be from Parma. Or white socks, you must be from Parma. Uh, And... He had a habit of cussing out uh, producers. Who wrote this fucking shit? Uh, what, what, what are you, an idiot? I can't read. And I, I think it was all kind of a defense mechanism uh, if he was having a bad day. Uh, don't know for sure. But uh, the story goes that one day, uh, one of the people he was berating said, Look, Ernie, uh, cut the shit, man. We, we got to get this done. And he became puppy-like. And with that producer, never any mess ever again. Uh, I don't know. I think there are enough people in the business now and enough really good people. You better not come with the prima donna shit. You just better not come with it. Nobody wants to uh, Nobody wants to do that. Oh, yes. Uh, Heather reminds me of uh, the Shatner moment. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a great story. I'll tell it a, another time. Uh, oh, Lonnie, I'm going to see you next week. Happy New Year. Oh, that's so cute. Those gnus. Uh, can you impart a general rule of thumb to help all those eager beavers who think all they need is a well-pronounced demo, well-produced demo, that there's much more than doing VO well than just doing different voices and reading? Good place to plug your Mexico training. <laughs> I was going to get to it. I was going to get to it. Um... Yeah, you know, one of the problems these days, uh, not only with the demos, but also uh, the fact that we have home studios and some people, like a lot of us radio people, who did a lot of production. I didn't do all that much production myself, but a lot of guys that come out of radio uh, are production whizzes and they know how to add special effects and so forth and so on. Well, 
you can put together a demo uh, and, you know, you did 50 takes of this and 50 takes of that, and 20 takes of this, and you're splicing and dicing and cutting it up. Uh, and you can Frankenstein together something that sounds amazing. But can you step into the studio and deliver that now? And that's what you have to be able to do. Step into the studio, step to the microphone, uh, give that script a once over and now. Um, and a lot of people have thought that they had a great career going uh, quickly because they did that kind of demo. And sometimes people are doing those kinds of auditions. Uh, but when they got to the studio, they could not deliver. I have heard too many stories. I have replaced too many of these voice actors in video games and commercials uh, who sounded great, had d deep, rich, beautiful voices, uh, but they had, didn't have the acting. So, uh, yes, you have to be able to deliver now. Uh, you really need to be a good actor, especially, and this brings me... Uh, to what I uh, what you just brought up, Game Vio Mexico 2023, April 27th through April 30th, Acamal, Mexico. It's so beautiful. It's in the jungle. It's down a dirt road, off a dirt road, off a dirt road, um, in the jungle, close to the ocean. Uh, you'll, you'll spend your days uh, studying Vio with me, Randall Ryan, Aaron Fitzgerald, Mark Estale, Gillian Bashir, uh, and then there's the beach. Um, all you got to do is get there. Uh, you'll handle your flight. Uh, but after that, everything is taken care of, care of to and from the airport, uh, all your meals, um, and you'll be in a private bungalow. Uh, if you want to bring a guest, it'll cost you a little more, but uh, you can. Uh, and it is just beautiful. Uh, you know, the toucan there, you know, they got toucans there and monkeys and, uh, all kinds of beauty, beautiful plants and whatnot. Uh, while I was there, got to go to the beach and watch the turtles them dig themselves out of the sand and make their journey to the ocean. It was just amazing. I know it, we've seen it on television, but when you're there watching the little turtles and you think, you think they'd all just all go together. Oh, let's get to the water. Oh, no. Hee hee. Where we go? Yay. Uh, but it's kind of like life. Uh, one or two brave souls goes first, then a few more, and finally the rest. Back. Okay, I guess it's okay. Let's go. He went that way. I guess it's okay. Woohoo. We're going. Ah, oh, there's the water. Whee. I'm a sea turtle. Um, I'm sorry. I was just having fun doing that. Uh, but. It's, it's going to be fantastic. And we have a, uh, a concept of how we want to do this. We are going to start at the beginning. We're going to start with the principles of acting. The principles of acting uh, that would work for on camera or on stage. And then we will teach you how to create that world uh, with just a microphone and words on a page. Uh, with video games and animation, th those are our biggest hurdles. Uh, too many people think if you just have the voice, uh, you're acting. If you can do a lot of different voices and accents, wonderful thing. But it does not make up for the acting, for being a real character. It's not about the words. It's about being the character. And we teach you how to find that character, be that character, and create scenes that have the feel, the movement, the connection. I like to call it taking the words off the page. Uh, and if you are interested, you can uh, just stop by GameVOMexico.com uh, and check it out and get more information. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. Well, uh, it's not really a, a question there for this, but hey, Pamela Tansy, how are you? Best to you, Dave, and yours. Best to you and yours, Dave. Uh, Herb Merriweather, ha, uh, what a good little sea turtle you are. Why, thank you. Uh, 
you know, and at another time in life, I would have said, gosh, maybe somebody will hear me and hire me to play a sea turtle. <laughs> uh, LOL. How'd that go again, Dave? Well, we're, I'm not going to do that again. Uh, sea turtle impression. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, just see, not just, not just sea turtle. Baby sea turtle. Oh, man. Look, ha, there's the ocean. I hope a shark doesn't get me. Um, all right. <laughs> Anyway, uh, it's going to be great. Uh, well, let me go back to that for just a second. Uh, Randall Ryan is a fantastic director. I've worked with him many times over the years. Uh, and actually, I brought him into teaching. Uh, I was doing some workshops in Dallas uh, a number of years ago, and I had worked with him a number of times. And he said, you know, I'd be interested in teaching. I said, well, come on up. I can give my students another perspective of uh, not just working with a, a voice actor who's teaching them to be a voice actor, but the perspective of a voice casting director and director uh, who, who's, whose uh, uh, view is from the director's chair. Uh, we'll have Aaron Fitzgerald, who is just amazing as an actress. Mark S. Dale, who has directed many, 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 many video games. Uh, he has a game production company in London. Uh, Gillian Brashear, uh, who has cast and directed lots of projects and has a great sensitivity uh, for actors, a uh, great way to help you find that character, and find uh, what that character is all about in, in a particular scene. Uh, Luke de Villar. Boy, can I get all this on uh, one thing? Okay, let's see. What did you have to say here, Luke? I'm making this a little bigger. Uh May you all have a sensational year, 2023. The years are not worse and worse, depending on each of us, uh, of cynical levels or interest in uh, Bukowski's books. <laughs> we simply tend to forget about the good and wonders of this world. Let us all focus on the good stuff and uh, book, something on, book something on the way. There you go. Uh, true, you know... Uh, it is a beautiful world, uh, and at the same time, uh, there are a lot of things that can get us down, and uh, I, I think we need to be aware and do our very best to make the world a better place, but also understand the world is uh, a wonderful and magnificent place. You can, uh, you can be in the work of making things better, but still be in the joy of being here. All right. Oh. How'd that get so small? Michael Gover, I could really use some acting training. Mexico is sounding great. Will the demo be included in the package? We will talk about demos, but uh, no, the, the, the price point isn't such that we could uh, do a demo there. We will be talking about demos once again, and uh, we're going to do it this way. If you have a demo, uh, we will listen to and critique your demo and they give you pointers on how that demo could be better. Uh, if you don't have a demo, we will be talking about how to put together a great demo. And when I say how to put together a great demo, I don't mean do it yourself. I know there's going to be somebody out there that has put together a great demo, uh, great demos for themselves. They are the exception to the rule. Uh, don't think that uh, because one person did it uh, that you can uh, Sarah Card, Happy New Year, Dave. Hope uh, uh, hope everything has a magnificent VO. Hope every, I think you wanted everybody, has a magnificent VO year. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, any other thoughts, questions? I think we, uh, we took care of, uh, oh, oh, what was his name? Uh, Eric. I think we took care of Eric. And uh, I will encourage Eric to... Uh, you know, we'll get together and have a talk, and we'll see where it goes from there. I'll listen to some of his stuff, and you know, my my true joy would be to be become just amazed and go, yes, let's let me help you get this stuff out there because you're just so amazing. Uh, but that isn't always the case. Uh, Grace Newton, any tips on breaking character and going back to uh, reality after you've become a character? For example, I performed a monologue from Night Mother, and was in a pretty dark place for a bit. You know, I've never had a problem with that. Um, 
I, I think for me, and I can't say this is going to work for you, but for me, I have to remind myself that I am playing somebody else who has a different life, a different worldview. I'm letting that character speak through me for a certain amount of time. Uh, and yes, I may call upon some things from my past that uh, disturbing, troubling, hurtful, whatever. Uh, but then I have to let them go. And uh, I, I don't have a problem stepping away from that non-reality, from that character. Uh, and I'm not, you're not the first person I've heard sometimes that uh, takes himself to too dark a place. Uh, I know how to, to bring myself back. And I, I think that's the thing you're going to have to learn to do. Um, and maybe start counting your blessings when you step away from that character. The things in your life that bring you joy, uh, that bring you peace. Uh, remind yourself you are not named character here. You are Grace Newton. Oh... Uh, Interesting question. Kind of like it. When you travel, do you always bring a travel studio with you? abso effin Um And uh, it varies a little bit from time to time. Uh, I have my iPad Pro. I have uh, my uh, laptop. Uh, I change microphones from time to time. More often than not, I'm carrying a little Apogee iPad mic. I had that for years now. It's the... Uh, uh, what do they call that thing? Um, the hype mic, the Apogee hype mic. It's a small little mic, but it's it's a great little mic. Uh, but from time to time, I will take along a little box with me. I've got a little UA Volt One. Uh, I also have a Focusrite TI Two, uh, and I'll take one of those and my Neumann uh, uh, TLM One Hundred Two. Um, uh, and oh, where did I put it? Oh, I stuck it someplace else. Uh, I have the Chaotica eyeball that I like to use and, uh, that just works. Uh, don't have to make the pillow fort anymore. So yeah, I always take, uh, a travel set with me and I audition from it. I work from it. Uh, and it, you know, don't have to miss a beat. You know, that's one of the interesting things about, uh, doing voiceover now you don't have to be in LA you know a few years ago I would get the question well I want to do video games or I want to do TV promos or whatever do I have to live in LA and very often especially uh, for video games at the time and animation at the time yeah you gotta live in LA you can do some things but the AAA games the the big productions uh, for animation yeah you're gonna have to be here that isn't necessarily true anymore. Uh, the technology has been there for a while, and the pandemic uh, made it necessary that if things were going to continue to be produced, uh, they would have to record actors from remote places. Well, some of those remote places are other cities in the United States. Some of those remote places are outside of the United States. All you need is good equipment, a good room to record in, uh, a high-speed internet connection, and you are good to go. So uh, a lot of people who think, ah, I want to do voiceover, I'm going to have to move to L.A. No, you actually don't. Um, I'm not saying don't come here. Uh, I certainly love living in L.A. and um, a lot of places that it would be cheaper that I have no interest in. And thankfully, <laughs> I can afford to live in L.A., uh, but you don't have to. You don't have to be in L.A. or New York anymore. There are lots of places you can do this from where there's, well, like I say, uh, high-speed Internet, uh, and you're good to go. Uh, so you could be out in the hinterland someplace. Grace Newton, thank you. Uh, it's not just me and my empathy. <laughs> no, it, it, it happens to other people. And if you have to, you know, consciously back out of that character, consciously back out of that character. 
Uh, oh, Grace, again, thank you for taking the time to tell me those tips. You are welcome. It is my great pleasure. Um, well, you know what? Uh, unless we have any more questions, I think I'm going to cut out of here early. I, you know, I hope my boss won't dock me any pay for leaving and, uh, early, but uh, I'll just make one more reminder about uh, Game VO Mexico 2023. Uh, April 27th uh, through the 30th, Akamal, Mexico. Uh, level up your game career. Comprehensive video game voiceover getaway will be, you know, from 10 till 6. Uh, you will be studying voiceover. You will be coming an actor. Uh, we will have uh, Q&A sessions uh, beyond our our setup, uh, you were taking this class and this class and this class, where you can ask anything. So maybe uh, on the morning after the first day, you can ask questions about what you went through on that first day. Um, and we'll all be living together, eating together uh, for those three days. So uh, it's 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 going to be great. It's beautiful. The food is great. The weather is fabulous, um, and uh, if if you're interested, would love to uh, have you come and check us out. Uh, let's see, Walter Williams. Thanks for another great Facebook Live, Dave. Always great something. Uh, always glean something from these sessions. Ah, yes, love that glean word. Uh, so I am going to call it a night and get a little dinner early this time. All right, everybody. Uh, Here's wishing you a wonderful 2023. And of course, in passing, I will say it again, book something. See ya.